Welcome to the Sports Shuffle. My name is Via Mechie and I'll be your host. And Super Bowl 54 is finally set. And I'm so excited for the matchup between the Kansas City Chiefs and my San Francisco 49ers. So let's give a quick overview in this Super Bowl. This is the first Super Bowl that has teams with red as their primary color. This is the first appearance for the Chiefs in 50 years and their second appearance overall. This is the seventh trip to the Super Bowl for the San Francisco 49ers. The last time they won in 2012, they lost against the Baltimore Ravens. And the last time they won was in 1994, 25 years ago against the San Diego Chargers in the NFL's 75th year. This is the 100 year anniversary for the NFL. The Niners are back in it. I don't know, it seems like it was written. It seems like it was written. I'm just, if the 49ers win this Super Bowl, they will be tied with the New England Patriots and the Pittsburgh Steelers for the most Super Bowls for a franchise with six. The Chiefs are trying to end the second longest drought of franchises that have previously won the Super Bowl. The 49ers are the third franchise in NFL history to reach the Super Bowl a year after having four wins or less in the whole season. In terms of nicknames, the San Francisco 49ers linebacking core calls themselves the Hot Boys. Born Alexander. Boys University. But their front four doesn't have an official nickname, although I prefer the term the Gold Rush. I've seen a lot of people calling Patrick Mahomes my homeboy. I don't know if that's a name that he likes, but we do know that he likes ketchup and he puts it on everything, including his steak. I myself am a vegan, but I feel you on the ketchup. Put it on everything. I love it. The 49ers have been close games all season long. And the Chiefs have never lost a game by more than seven points with Patrick Mahomes as their quarterback. It's amazing. This is the 49ers first winning season since 2013, but for the Chiefs, this marks the fourth straight time they've won the AFC West and six out of seven times they've made the playoffs with Andy Reid as their head coach. And another intriguing aspect about this matchup to me is the fact that these offenses are both explosive but have two very different ways that they go about it. I can't wait for this matchup to get started. But how did they get here? The Chiefs had to overcome a huge injury scare to Patrick Mahomes as he dislocated a kneecap earlier in the season. I don't know how you come back from that injury, but the rest of the team held down the fort as they fought their way to a respectable record, a good enough record to give them the number two seed in the AFC playoffs. Well, let's talk about the San Francisco 49ers, who after dominating the Minnesota Vikings, came into a playoff game against the Packers, a team that they previously already blew out earlier in the season. A lot of talk from the Packers about how they were going to come ready to play, how they learned something, how it wasn't going to happen again, and basically was the same result. And the irony of that game was it was the six-year anniversary of the 2013 NFC Championship game. Broken up, picked off. This game is over. We're on sportsmanlike conduct. And how ironic, how poetic of it was it for six years later. Richard Sherman to pick off Aaron Rodgers to advance the 49ers to play in the Super Bowl. But the Super Bowl is finally here and it's so interesting to watch the game when your team is in it because you watch that team from beginning to end. You know the ins and outs. You know all the players on the team, all the storylines, but when the mainstream media gets a hold of it, they start to spotlight guys who otherwise wouldn't be known like Raheem Mostert. And it's funny because you see the mainstream media pronounce some of these guys' name wrong. Monster, you think about their running game with Monster. Speaking of storylines, I've heard a lot of people talk about the Warriors in regards to this Kansas City Chiefs team because they can score so fast. You know, Patrick Mahomes is changing the game. That's what a lot of people are saying. I think it's a little bit different when you compare in basketball and football, but let's run with the comparison. Let's run with the Warriors comparison. I can see how Patrick Mahomes, with the way he can throw the ball, with the no look passes that he's doing, with just how he plays the game, it does seem like. Not only him, but like Lamar Jackson, some of these guys, like the game is changing for the quarterback position. And I think that you can put Mahomes as that catalyst, especially if they win the Super Bowl, because he's essentially going to be the face of the NFL, similar to how Steph Curry was as he came up on the scene and won his first championship and went on his United MVP run and did all that. So I can see that comparison, but I also would draw comparisons with the Niners and the Warriors. You got Sherman and Draymond, guys that are the enforcers for their team, guys that do a lot of talking in the media and get the tension off of the team and kind of more focused on them. And guys that make checks that the teams are going to have to cash, but guys that are extremely talented, great, legendary, Hall of Fame defensive players. And then you have the diversity of the player. With the Warriors, it was pass, shoot, dribble. Everybody kind of has this aspect of being able to do a little bit more, a little bit different. You got Draymond, you know, running the ball up the court. You got you know, Curry being able to shoot at a high clip, but even your bigs can shoot a little bit, and everybody can kind of do a little bit of everything. You look at the Niners, 
you have a little bit of that with their receiving core. I mean, guys like Debo Samuel and George Kittle and even Juszczyk, are they going to hand the ball off on an option? Are they going to do a, a reverse to get a run? Are they going to catch the ball? Are they going to block downfield? They're all doing multiple things and diverse things. And I think you can kind of make that comparison with the Warriors a little bit. And then, of course, the teams from the day. That's the ultimate comparison right there. E-40 had his song for the Warriors. Now he's got his song for the Niners. Everybody say Warriors. Bang bang Niner gang. Bang bang Niner gang. Bang bang Niner gang. I think it was written for the Niners to win this game and start off a dynasty run. Overrated, underrated. There was so much coverage for OBJ after LSU won the national championship for him basically being too on on the sideline, giving money to players, taking steam away from their moment, being with the band at LSU. We all know about what happened in the locker room. Um, you know, a lot of stories where it's just talking about nothing. I mean, OBJ is somebody who probably has more Instagram followers than any other player in the NFL. He's one of the main superstars in the NFL that is recognizable outside of the game of football. And because of that, they get so much media coverage and so much media attention, which is fine, but guys start talking about them as if they do so many things wrong and are in and out of trouble with the police and things like that, when that's not necessarily the case. But then I look at a guy like Julian Edelman, who's been suspended from the league for performance enhancing drugs, who's just recently was arrested for being intoxicated in public in LA and jumping on cop cars. And I'm not saying Julian Edelman's a bad person and deserves to be bashed by the media, but what I'm saying is that there are people who have actual run-ins with the law and who've been suspended from the league and things of that nature who don't get talked about at all in the mainstream media. And you have other guys who do things that are borderline and maybe they shouldn't be doing this, maybe they shouldn't be doing that, but maybe not necessarily breaking the law, or maybe not necessarily, you know, being suspended from their teams or even on teams who get talked about way more. And I get it, because they have more followers, they're more polarizing personalities maybe and things of that nature. But my point is that don't start thinking that just because somebody's in the media or just because somebody's being talked about a lot, that they're actually doing bad things and that there's other people in the league who aren't doing those same things or even worse things, because that is happening. And it makes you think, why do we cover athletes like OBJ for simple things like giving money to college players, but then not even talk about players like Julian Edelman who have actually gotten suspended from the league or gotten arrested for certain transgressions? It makes you wonder why that is. And this topic extends to beyond just the athletes. You have most casual sports fans don't even know who most owners of teams are, but you have the guys like Robert Kraft, who most people know. And when you have a situation like he had with the whole massage parlor situation, it's similar to OBJ. Nothing really that he did wrong. It's just a lot of media attention. What's going to happen? Is he going to be suspended from the league? Is he going to have to sell the team? All these things that we're talking about. And then there's another story that comes out. The AP just posted a story about the New Orleans Saints and how they've been trying to shield emails from being publicly released that they've sent to the Catholic Church as the Catholic Church has battled the pattern and practice of concealing crimes of sexual abuse and pedophilia. So basically the Saints are trying to keep the documents and emails that they've sent to the church private. Although they've said that they've done nothing wrong, they said that they've just told them to be transparent with the public, don't hide anything from law enforcement, be upright about everything. But if that's the case, then why would you be hiding these emails? It makes no sense. And again, I'm not a journalist, I'm not a reporter. I leave it up to people who do this as a profession to find the information out about the situation, to get down to the bottom of it, get all the details out, to understand what the accusations are from reality, to understand what's really going on here, what the Saints' involvement was, was it one person, was it an organizational push, all these sort of things that need to be covered and, and achieved by reporters and by journalists and people who do this as a profession. But as somebody who expresses my opinion on my show, on my sports show, I just wanted to bring up the hypocrisy of the sports media and how we pick certain stories like the Robert Kraft situation with the massage parlor. I mean, they choose to cover things that they think are going to get clicks. It has nothing to do with, um, you know, what should be covered and who should really be vilified, what we really should be looking into if, if this is actually false or if this is true, you know, instead of talking about OBJ giving money to players or talking about Robert Kraft in a parlor. It just, it's something that disgusts me and I think that as mainstream sports media, people got to do a much better job. And because we're running up against it, I'm going to end the show by combining our underrated with our shout outs, which is going to be family. At the end of the day, football, sports, it really doesn't matter. 
It's escapism. It's a chance to get away from life. It's a chance to get away from things that are really priorities, but it's also a chance to experience certain moments with people together. You know, a lot of times during football season, because it's just 16 games, people have their rituals. I know I do. I go to my cousin's house every single Sunday or Monday or Thursday, whenever we're playing, and we watch these games together. We watch these games as a family. That's what it's all about, those memories. And when the Niners finally made it to the Super Bowl, I got calls from so many people non-sports fans or whether they were Seahawks fans or whether they were Giants fans or whatever the case was, you get that love because people know how much it means to you. For example, I got a call from a close friend who's a Giants fan. I watched the Super Bowl with him in 2007 and 2011 when we were in college and he was just talking about those memories of how excited we were for him because he's a Giants fan and now he's excited for me because he really feels like this team is going to win the Super Bowl and he's excited. He knows I'm super juiced about it and just reminiscing about those memories and going through those moments and being able to like take some time to talk to him. That's what sports is really about. And it's the underrated aspect. It's the family. It's the coming to somebody's house every day or every weekend to watch a certain game and watch your team play. It's the family and the memories that that produces. It's the reminiscing the back the last time the Niners won a Super Bowl when, when you're five years old and watching Steve Young. It's all these things are memories and moments. And that's what sports at the end of the day is about. It's not about the wins and losses and the debating who's the best and you know all these stats and X, Y, Z. It really just comes down to your friends, your family, who you're watching it with, who you're experiencing life with. And I think that's ultimately why, why we love it. It's an aspect of, uh, it's a metaphor through which we see the lens of life. And I appreciate sports for that. I appreciate the memories, the moments, I'm so looking forward to the Super Bowl. It's going to be great. Whether you're a Chiefs fan or a Niners fan or you don't even care about who wins, it should be a great one. It should be a great game. And as a sports fan, I'm looking forward to enjoying the game. And I'm looking forward to enjoying it with family because that's what it's all about. So regardless of what happens on Sunday, I'm probably going to be in tears. Hopefully, they're tears of joy. We're going to end with the quote of the day, and it goes as follows. You stay ready. You don't have to get ready. Richard Sherman. San Francisco 49ers. Yet again with the quote of the day. Enjoy your Super Bowl Sunday. Go Niners. Thanks for watching the Sports Shuffle and make sure you subscribe to Trap Art TV for more content from this show and other shows on our platform. And if you're a Niners fan, make sure you subscribe to the 49X365 podcast with my boy JB, where it's all Niners all day. Again, appreciate y'all for watching. My name is Bia Mechi. It's positive energy and good vibes. Cheers. Fish trap on.